Hello and welcome to my workshop. In this video, I talk G-code. I'm naturally a curious person, so whenever I got comfortable with the Snapmaker uh, and all the files that I needed to send to the machine, I kind of decided to figure out what those files are, what do they contain, what do they do, and that sent me on a trip to learn a little bit more about G-Code. Now, before I proceed with the video, I kind of need to give that, you know, 24-page disclaimer. I'm doing this only for information purposes so that you can get an understanding of your machine uh, and basically all the components of it, see how they, how they work, how they interact and everything else. Uh, I am not encouraging the modification of a G-code or writing your own G-code as that may lead to damages to the machine or to yourself. Uh, now, if you have prior knowledge and training to it, well, go ahead, do whatever you want, but this video is strictly information purposes only. Now that we have completed the disclaimer, let's roll up the sleeves and delve into G-code. <laughs> So what is G-Code? Uh, G-Code in its simplest terms is instructions to the machine. Uh, it's basically a programming language that basically tells the machine to either move or do something with the two head. Now the two head can, uh, the instructions to the two head can vary depending on what the machine is. So uh, CNC's and lasers have a completely different set of machine related uh, commands as opposed to a 3D printer for example. Uh, but basically, those are the commands. There is an article on Wikipedia about G-Code and all the various commands within it, so I'm going to link that in the description so you can read it uh, in your own free time. Uh, but basically, those are the various commands, and not all of those commands are used by the Snapmaker, just a small subset of it, uh, because it's a, a simple machine. It's not like those industrial robots that uh, do a whole bunch of work. They can change tools in one go without the human intervention. So it's just using a little subset of that uh, whole list that's on Wikipedia. So what does the G-code look like? Well, the G-code file is basically a plain text file and we can see right here the uh, G-code from the last week's uh, button hole drilling uh, program. And this is basically what it is. The file begins with a header where you can see uh, various pieces of information such as the size, number of lines, uh, and even an image. And then we have the commands right here. And like I mentioned earlier, the commands are mainly divided into uh, movement commands, which are most of the G uh, commands. And then there is the machine two head command, which are the M ones. Uh, the commands are uh, structured one command per line. So it's easy to know what's happening just by reading the code line by line. Now, instead of talking, let's execute some commands. Let's turn on the machine. So the Snapmaker has booted up. I set the point of origin to be slightly above the X. And you can connect your Snapmaker to your computer via the USB cable or the Wi-Fi. I'm using Wi-Fi in my case. And once you connect it under the uh, Workspace tab, this particular console tab appears. And that basically gives you the location where you can execute your simple single line commands. Now, if you type in H for help, you're going to get this little menu. Type in G gives you a list of the uh, G commands or the movement commands. Uh, and same thing with the M gives you a list of all the M commands. Now you have to scroll up and down. Um, but basically, those are the commands used by the Snapmaker. So we're going to do a simple command, and that is basically move the two heads 10 centimeters to the right. Uh, so in my case, we're going to type in G0, like for rapid movement. We are going to say X at 100. And let's do the speed at 1,500 uh, millimeters per second. Now, the question is, does capitalization in lowercase matter? Yes, it does. So obviously, writing things in lowercase didn't do anything. So let's write them up in uppercase. And there we are. Image two head moves. Now, if you want to go back 
to the exact same origin. Uh, all we have to do is just set x to 0. So that means it goes back to the 0 point or the origin. And let's just for uh, fun and games, we quadruple the speed. Whoa, speed. So you can basically also do the command for turning on the machine as well. So that's M3 power 100 or uh, P is basically a, a parameter. So in the CNC, uh, with the CNC2 head, the 100 is the uh, maximum speed. Uh, if you're doing the laser module, of course, you can set the laser to anywhere between 1% and 100%. So that uh, variable may vary. Uh, so let's execute the command. And there we are. And if I want to turn it off, I can simply type M5 and it stops. So this is how you can execute your commands. Again, simple commands. Uh, you, can <laughs> you can practically take your entire G-code file that the program generates and instead of giving it to the machine, you can go line by line and execute it. But uh, <laughs> uh, that's not recommended because it might take you eons just to finish a simple program. Uh, now let's uh, do a little code ex execution from the file, you know, just to uh, see how things go with the um, with the snap maker and the actual file generated. So in this case, the movement is uh, one centimeter along the x z axis. So it's going to go up, and there we are. Now the next command is moving the uh, two head or moving the machine. Uh, four and a half millimeters to the right and four and a half millimeters uh, I guess downwards so we can see the machine moving there Then it's uh, moving along the X Z axis Powering up the machine the same commands that we executed And if we were actually cutting, uh, that would be the case uh, Z minus two, which means a goal two millimeters under the origin. So in our case, the uh, origin was right at the top of the uh, machine, uh, not machine, uh, right on top of the uh, workpiece. So a command like this would basically be uh, do something to the workpiece. And of course we can go back to and uh, turn off the the two heads. So basically those are the operations. And like I said, you can copy and paste it line by line or you can just let the controller of the machine execute those uh, files. So the question now is, can you modify an existing G code or can you write your own G code? And the answer of course is yes. I mean, you already saw it. Uh, G code is a plain text file and you can open it in any text editor. Wikipedia tells you all the possible G-code commands, so definitely you can write something and send it to machine for execution. Even the small commands that we used into the example section with that just simple movement left and right, you can write that into a file and send it to the machine and it's going to execute it. So definitely you can write your own G-code. Question is, is it advisable? Uh, I would say not, unless you accept the risk of damaging your tool or yourself or unless you have some sort of an experience with industrial machines, G-code, or computing science. I have a computing science background, so that's why I allowed myself to make a small change to my G-code. If you remember the previous video, my buttonhole drilling procedure was basically executing the same steps over and over again with a little pause in between, and the pause was the thing that I added. In the SnapMaker software, you can basically add any number of tool paths to your, um, to your image that you want to see and see. Uh, but those two paths are executed one after the other without any uh, breaks in between. And for me, in order to change the workpiece, I needed a little break. So I found in the G-code where uh, the one tool path ends and the other one begins, and I inserted that uh, G4 command, which is wait, and then the parameter S5, uh, five seconds. The other way to write it is P5000, and that's 5000 milliseconds. So there were two ways to write it, so I just chose the uh, five seconds. 
So that's what I did, a very low risk change, which basically means wait a few seconds. I wasn't uh, modifying the whole program to go and do something completely different. Uh, it's just pause at that little space. So I covered a few things about G-Code. Uh, if you have any other questions about G-Code, let me know in the comments and I will try to address them either in a different follow-up video or I will answer them into the comments. Now, as a bonus, let's go over a few other examples as I want to explain the difference between relative and absolute positioning. So here we are at the uh, Snapmaker software under the Workspace tab and of course we have connected the computer to the machine and that's where we have this little console where we can send a few commands. Uh, what we're interested in here is the G90 and the G91 commands. One of them is absolute positions, the other one is relative positions. Uh, what's the difference? Uh, I'll start with the relative positioning and that's basically relative to where the tool head currently is. For example, let's just set the machine to use the relative positioning. So for example, if you want to move the tool head 10 centimeters to the right, all we have to do is do this. So basically we're saying move 10 centimeters to the right at the speed of uh, 3000 millimeters per minute. And there we go, the snapmaker executes it. Now, if you want to move two centimeters to the left, all we have to do is, well, we know where the two head currently is, and we want to move it two centimeters to the left. All we have to do is just simply add uh, two centimeters or 20 millimeters, and there you go, it executes them. Now, when we talk about absolute positioning, that is absolute positioning relative to the origin. And we're going to do a little example about this right now. So let's say use the uh, absolute positioning. We go to the work origin. And let's execute the same two commands that we executed one after the other in the previous, um, uh, previous example. Uh, and if you're wondering what am I doing to get the previous commands, I just use the uh, arrow keys up and down. So that is the command to move the two head 10 centimeters to the right. Of course, there is absolutely no difference because the origin was our very first starting point. So there is no difference between the two. But now if I execute the command, I want to move 20 uh, millimeters to the left. Because we're using absolute position, it's going to move it 20 millimeters from the origin. And let's watch this. See, there we are, 20 millimeters from the origin. Now, under absolute position, if you want to repeat what we did before, which is just move two centimeters from where we were before, the command that we needed to execute right after we executed uh, move uh, 10 centimeters to the right is move eight centimeters to the right. So that's the difference between relative and absolute. Uh, absolute is always from your origin, what's the coordinates from your origin, and relative is what are the coordinates from where the two head currently is. I hope this video was useful to you. If you liked it, make sure to like, share and subscribe with a notification bell so that you get notified of my next video release. Also, follow me on all social media channels. All the links are in the description.